So Control Paladin is actually kind of a thing right now, but most people aren't playing Scorpomatic. And the reason Scorpomatic's cool in Paladin is because you can combine it with Elder Peacekeeper and Humility to kill any minion that your opponent plays. And as a bit of extra synergy, we're playing Marin the Fox. It summons a 0-8 treasure chest for the opponent, and Scorpomatic kills it. Sometimes it's pretty awkward to sink 8 damage into the chest, but when you can just play a 2-drop to kill it, that works pretty nicely. And Scorpomatic is just a pretty good card on its own. There are a lot of 1-3 minions in the metagame, Mana Worm, Northshire Cleric, Nether Spite Historian, Voidwalker. It kills Doomsayer, it kills Righteous Protector, pretty much everything in Aggro Paladin. So I think Scorpomatic's pretty cool. Now the downside of playing Scorpomatic is it makes it a bit awkward to play possibly the best card in the game called Arms. Because typically you want the minions you're summoning to be better than 1-2s, although honestly Call to Arms is so good if you're just summoning 3 1-2s that's probably worth 4 mana. But I want to hit some things with the Scorp, I don't want to summon 1-2s. So we're skipping out on the most powerful card, for potentially the second most powerful card, Scorpomatic. Probably not the second most powerful card in the game, but we're going to find out I guess. Outside of Scorpomatic things, we've got some standard Control Paladin things, Equality combos. Since we're not playing Call to Arms, we can play Doomsayer. I've got Sunkeeper Tarim, Uther of the Ebon Blade, I've even got a Nazoth. I'm not playing too many Natural Death Rattles, just Tyrion and a couple Mistress of Mixtures. But every time I play against Paladin, they have three Tyrions because they play Stonehill Defender. So we should have plenty of Death Rattles. And if we do hit our Tyrion, we can use Desperate Sand to make more Tyrions and summon those off Nazoth. Although that is a little bit risky going into something like Polymorph. But the main function of the Desperate Stand is to resummon the treasure chests from Mare and the Fox. So you give them a 0-8 treasure chest, you throw some Desperate Stands on it, you Scorp the 0-8, comes back as a 0-1, and then you can easily kill these with just like Dudes or Wild Pyromancer or Consecration or whatever. And then to round things off we've got an Acidic Swamp Ooze. What a time to be alive, where you have to play weapon destruction to counter mages and warlocks. Arthas versus Jaina. You asked for it. Kolodoros. The Scorp kills Mana Worm, right? But maybe I just want to play Doomsayer instead. I guess I can just keep both and see what's better. Scorp a Mana Worm, and then he plays like an Archaeologist or something, then I throw out the Doomsayer, maybe? He didn't have a Mana Worm. That's good for me, even though my tech didn't line up. Oh. Alright, so he's a Control Mage. I guess I'm just gonna do this. It's kind of a bummer missing out on my Tarim's battle cry, but a 3-7 taunt on turn 2 is pretty good. They never expect the Scorp. This Meteor positioning though. I guess my Tarim has 3 health, so it doesn't really matter. Oh man. If that pulled Tyrion, it was so gross. But Doomsayer's really bad. Well, that's both rats down, so I guess I always get to play Nazoth. And Nazoth is pretty good since I've drawn Tyrion already. But he might have a Polymorph for it, which he does now. So, is there a way that I can, like, kill my own Tyrion with the stack? I guess I could, at some point, go, like, turn 10, Tyrion, Pyromancer, Coin, and then I don't have mana for equality. I think this Tyrion's just getting polymorphed. I guess I'll just have to discover another one of the Stonehill Defender. Seems like the play. Well, unfortunately, Doomsayer dies here if I try to play it out. I guess I can use Humility. But if I play Humility on that thing, then I almost feel like I don't even really need to play the Doomsayer, but where am I playing the Doomsayer if not here? 
I could also go Doomsday or Desperate Stand. But then he only needs one more damage to deal with it, although one more damage shouldn't be that easy. But I really want to combo this Desperate Stand with like a Marin or something. Let's just clear the board with Doomsayer, I guess. Wow, I'm really surprised he put the effort into clearing that. I was skeptical that I should even play it. I could see if he dropped another 4-4 to go along with it or something, but that's surprising. So, I can use the Scorp to kill this 1-4. But it's really useful for killing the Marin chest. I think I'm just gonna hold for a bit. No point in coining out Tyrion, because it just gets polymorphed. Although I guess I'm happy to see a polymorph before Jaina comes down. Let's just coin this guy out. It's really nice to upgrade my hero power in this matchup, since after he plays his Death Knight, I basically can't make recruits, because it's basically me spending two mana for him to get a water elemental. But the two twos are certainly a little bit more awkward for him. Kind of unfortunate that he got something I can't kill with my weapon. Okay, there's Marin. I think I play him. I could have, like, held for turn 10 so I could go Marin plus Scorp in the same turn. That would avoid him, I don't know, like, polymorphing his own chest or something. But if he wants to polymorph his own chest, I'm happy with that. And if I go for Marin Scorp in the same turn, then I don't even get to play the Desperate Stands on it, and I think I really want to do that. I guess I'm just going to double Desperate Stand here. It does give him a one health thing that he can use his hero power on, but like, I still get a treasure out of that, right? So I think it's fine. I'm not sure how much I want to play this one. This could be a matchup that goes to fatigue. So I want to just kill this instead of one of these. I mean, I can kill both with my weapon if I really want to use my weapon like that. I guess I just want to make sure I get this treasure. Jeez. Alright. Karen is really good with Nzoth. That was maybe even, like, one of the best legendaries I could have gotten. I was gonna say the best, but I guess another Tyrion would have just been better. I did sink a lot of damage into those treasure chests, which I'm not sure if that was correct, but I certainly... Well, I got somewhat rewarded for it because Karen Bloodhoof is so good here. Okay, there's that polymorph down. Alright, cool. So I'm gonna see if I can just get away with playing Tyrion here. Although he could have another Polymorph in his hand, and he wanted to hold it for next turn so he could, uh, so he could hero power whatever he polys. He still has 15 cards in his deck, though. I think I'm just gonna go for the Tyrion and hope it works out. And we'll kill this thing, I guess. Even if he has the Poly for the Tyrion, I'm still getting Karen back with Zoth. Damn, he did have it. Well, at least Marin lines up really nicely against a water elemental. It's just a bummer that I got these wondrous wands. I think at this point I'm just gonna have to play assuming that fatigue is not a thing. Because I think if I play with fatigue in mind, I'm probably just gonna lose. What's even really the payoff for playing these, though? Stonehill Defender, I guess, is the draw I'm looking for. If I hit Cairn into the 3-4, it goes down to 2 health. He pings it, it's frozen, so I can't trade with it again. If I don't find a Pyro, I'm not going to be able to deny that Water Elemental. I'm just going to draw cards, whatever. Stonehill Defender, 
Stonehill Defender is actually pretty awkward to play because it gives them water elementals. I guess I'm going to attempt to play my stone hills in a position where he can't just water elemental them. Or maybe on some turn I even go like stone hill, stone hill, pyro equality or something. Obviously I want the battle cries out of these stone hills, but I don't want him getting water elementals out of them. Well, he didn't set up the double hero power on Cairn. I can go for an equality, double trade. Then this thing's at one health. I guess I could just play the Pyromancer here and equality to kill off the Karen so I can't hero power it. That actually feels pretty bad, but I think it might be the play. At any cost. Hit with this one to chip his armor. Don't bother hitting with the second one because the Mistress is going to heal him up anyway. And now he doesn't have three damage in play, so I guess I can play these stone hills. That guy's pretty big, I guess. Stone Keeper Terum is great. I was really hoping for a Tyrion off one of those. I guess I should have started by playing this. Hmm. Didn't have to play quality there if I just Elder Peacekeeper to Zalextraza. I don't know. I think I have a fine board state, though. The time is now. I guess Nazoth isn't getting any better than this. Oh, I actually forgot I had a Mistress. That's kind of annoying. I was going to Aldor the 4-4 so he couldn't make a Water Elemental off the Cairn. But then he can just make one off the Mistress. The end draws near. Follow the rule. I think I'm still going to play it, though. That way he can't kill this off easily and then play some kind of AoE. Okay, this is why we've been holding the Acidic Swamp Ooze instead of playing it as a 3-2. I definitely do want to play Ooze here, so I really only have 8 mana to work with. I feel like I'm just going to end up playing Sunkeeper Terum along with a Hero Power. The free weapon lets me take out one of these guys, trade into this guy first, and then just trade off into this thing at the end, I guess. Seems okay. The frozen throne calls. Do I have any, like, equality consecration plays? I don't really like playing equality because my guys have a lot of stats. I don't really love playing Sunkeeper Terram either for the same reason. But I think I probably should. I guess that didn't end up making sense. I attacked first with Karen because it was a 4 power minion instead of a 3 power minion. But since I was trading in Nazoth afterward into the water elemental, going for 4 instead of 3 damage there actually healed him for 2. But at least I still have my death rattle in play to, uh, to play around AoE. And I guess technically I should have kept Nazoth alive instead of the Elder Peacekeeper in case of silence. Not that that's ever relevant. Well, I think if I lose this board, I lose the game. So, I guess I'm playing equality here, even though it's really bad. And then I'll just pass from here, I suppose. He definitely gets a Water Elemental this turn, but next turn I can Divine Shield a couple of my one health things.
I guess I can just trade off my one health things here and try to kill him with the, uh, the hero power. These guys have Divine Shield, so they're not that easy to kill. Most of the time I draw a Spiker to Seed next turn, so I can make the third one difficult to kill also. But yeah, I think if I don't manage to assemble all the Horsemen, there's no way I can win this game. I'm not sure how much AoE he still has left. Probably quite a bit. Meteor. Okay. I think I'm doing this. I actually just don't even care about his armor. I don't want to pop this Divine Shield. I just want to make sure this guy stays alive. The only chance I have is summoning all four of those, so intentionally killing one of them seems like a bad idea. It seems like this 4-8 should be pretty difficult for him to deal with, though. I've seen both Polymorphs, that's one of his Meteors, I'm not sure if he plays two. And I know I've seen quite a bit of other AoE. Sometimes he just can't deal with this. The bummer that he was able to high roll on that. I don't really know what his odds were though. Didn't even draw the steed this turn, which I probably needed to. Death was merely a setback. Let's just try to make his board as weak as possible, so he's unlikely to be able to deal with my stuff. I'm on a very short clock here. He's running low on cards, though. Maybe it's not that easy for him to deal with these two twos. Okay, he didn't draw the meteor, but I do know that he has a meteor left in his deck. So he has six cards left. If that meteor is his last AoE, uh, I guess he always just gets to hero power these guys down over two turns, huh? But I can spike ridge steed that one, so he can't. He's only showing five. I guess I'm just gonna play this here to block the Meteor, even though I think I probably still lose to the Meteor. He only has two cards to deal with one of these. Okay, the Meteor's still playable with that. Oh my god! I thought that game was impossible to win. The Marin treasures were definitely a real bummer, but it may have been wrong to ever even play the Wondrous Wands. I got way too close to fatiguing that game, but it got me to my Spiker Steeds, which helped me win, so I'm not really sure. <laughs> 